brushed on block mold. Now this is a really unusual technique that I'm going to show in this tutorial, but uh, this is a technique for those of you who are asking about less expensive ways to make some of these block molds to get the advantages of a block mold, but with the cost and labor of a brush on mold. And this is especially useful for large relief pieces, and especially those of you working in the art bronze trade where you need to be able to pull a wax pattern out of a mold. And sometimes a block mold is just not practical and can actually work against you. Now for starters, to give you an idea of kind of the why of this particular technique, if we were to make a block mold off of this simple relief plaque, this would take significantly more silicone to mold this piece. So if we take our length, width, and height dimensions, we wind up with 337.5 cubic inches. Now subtracting the mass of the pattern, we're still left with a substantial amount of silicone that it would take to pour this as a block mold of roughly five and a half pounds. Now for this mold, we want to make that mold, but we want to make it with the advantages of a block mold that we would get with a poured block mold, but we want to have the more conservative use of material like we would typically get with a brush on mold. So typically the way we would mold this piece is we'd put a box around it either with MDF or plywood or foam core board, and then we would fill that up with silicone and that would give us our finished mold. Now that is a fast way to do this and it's a relatively simple process, but the drawback is this does take a lot of silicone. It's fast and it's relatively simple, but it uses a fair amount of material and this becomes cost prohibitive if you're working with a really large piece. Now, typically for a mold this size of what I'm molding here, I typically make the margins around the outside of the mold about an inch out on the outside and allow for about an inch of silicone over the pattern. But that's with a typical block mold. Now what we're going to do here is a little bit different. Instead, we're still going to start out with a pattern and have that pattern on a baseboard with a wall around it. But instead of pouring the silicone up to the level we want, what we're going to do instead is brush our silicone over the pattern and onto the mold walls using a thixotropic additive added to our silicone. We're going to use multiple layers to build up an average thickness of about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch on average all over our part. And on the final coat of silicone, we're going to embed some keys, but we're going to place them so they're facing into the mold box. And then we're going to fill up the remainder of the mold with a low cost hard material, in this case, hydrocal. Now you could use a lot of materials like a tooling resin, like 1630, but the idea here is to make this as inexpensive as possible. Now the other benefit to this is by doing this technique of combining a brush on mold with a block mold technique is we get a much more stable mold. When we're making really large molds like this, it's much easier to keep these in alignment because we have that hard backing under the silicone. And then we also are able to demold much more delicate patterns because we don't have the stress of that block mold flexing around, especially when we're molding something fragile like wax patterns. Now to begin, we're going to anchor our pattern to a baseboard made of foam core. And then we're also going to build the mold box using more foam core board. Now, really important, I'm going to be using a platinum silicone for this. We'll be using TC5130F, which is the fast formula of that platinum silicone. If you're new to working with platinum silicones, I highly recommend check the end screen. I'm going to have some good resources there for brush on mold techniques, as well as how to check for contaminants that might mess up your platinum silicone. So be sure to check those links out on the end screen. Now, once we have our foam core board box constructed, we're ready to release our mold box and our pattern and start making our mold. Now we're going to release the pattern and the mold box using ZIP301 mold release. And you notice it says non-silicone mold release. That's really important. Anytime you're making a silicone mold, you don't want to use a mold release that contains any silicone oil. And once we get our pattern sprayed, we're going to let that sit and dry for about 20 to 30 minutes so we don't wind up with any gas bubbles on the surface of our mold. 
Now for the silicone, we're going to be using TC5130F Platinum Silicone. Now TC5130F is the fast formula of 5130. It's a one-to-one -one mix ratio, low viscosity, so it's ideal for poured block molds if that's the direction you're going. And it's a seven to eight minute working time and about an hour, hour and a half demold, a medium 25 Shore A softness, and this is the most important part, it can be thickened with SC5001 thickening agent. Now we're going to mix up a small batch first. This first batch was about 240 grams. So I did about 120 grams of part A and 120 grams of part B. And overall, a mold like this is going to use about a third of the material you would use for a standard block mold, sometimes less. It just depends on the configuration of the piece in the mold box and also how high of a relief piece you're working with. Now for this first batch, we're just going to mix up the 5130F one-to-one, -one, of course, by weight or volume, and then we're going to add a small amount of white pigment. We'll still be able to see through the silicone to some degree, but I'm adding that white pigment so that it will show up better against that black pattern, because that is a very dark pattern. I want to be able to see where I'm applying the silicone, and believe it or not, that will actually help me see where there's any air entrapment. Now, before we start brushing the silicone onto our pattern and mold box, we're going to pour up some of these little keys out of one of these blister key sheets. And the reason for this is we need these poured up first, so they'll be set up enough that we can peel them out of this key sheet and embed these on the last coat of silicone. So real important to get those keys poured up first and then start applying silicone to your piece. Now again, our working time is seven to eight minutes at room temperature. So that's an ideal working time for this size piece. We have more than enough time to get everything properly mixed and pigmented and poured into the key sheets and brushed onto our pattern. Now, if you're working on a a really large piece, you might think about using just the standard 5130. The TC5130, it has about a 30 minute working time and a demold time of about four hours. Now I didn't put any thickening agent in this batch because we want this to be low viscosity and flow over our pattern and capture all of that surface detail. And we also wanna make sure we brush this up on the sides of the mold box because ultimately that will form the sides of our block mold and help it register into the backing we're going to pour later on. Now once we have applied that surface, we're going to use some compressed air to gently break any air bubbles that are on the surface. We didn't vacuum degas this layer of silicone and we're not going to be pressure casting later. So if we're careful, we can get a really nice bubble free surface. Now this is about 30 minutes later and real important to make sure you don't touch the surface of your part to check and see if it's done. Check the inside of the mixing cup or the sides of the mold box to make sure it's ready. Now with 5130F, you can typically apply a layer of silicone about every 20 to 30 minutes especially if you're working at about 75 degrees or room temperature. Now our second batch we're mixing up is TC5130F plus pigment plus SC5001 thickening agent. Now we don't need this to be a really thick paste. I mixed up a batch here of about 400 grams and I added maybe about a gram or two of the SC5001. And what we want is a light paste consistency. We still want it to run a little bit, especially on the surface of our part. We wanna make sure we capture that detail really well with that second layer. And we also want it to have the ability to stay up on the sides of the mold box a little bit better than that first layer. And what you're going for with a mold like this, anytime you're making a brushed on mold, you don't want to think so much in terms of how many layers you're applying. You want to think in terms of your overall thickness that you want to achieve. Because technically you could add a lot of thixotropic additive and make this all in one coat. But for this application to make sure we get really good surface detail, we're building it up gradually. So we're doing that first layer really runny, the second layer slightly thicker, and now we're going to follow up with a third layer that's a lot thicker. And each layer is these thinner layers are probably adding about maybe an eighth of an inch of thickness to our mold. So our final layer can be a little bit thicker than that because now we have a bubble free surface and so now we're ready to build up kind of the working thickness of our mold with the remainder of our silicone. Now this is a slightly larger batch and you'll notice I'm putting a lot more of the SC5001 thickening agent in. 
And I've also added red pigment, and that's to contrast with the white pigment I put in earlier. And again, that just helps me track my progress that much better and be able to see where I'm applying the silicone. Also, really helpful if you're working in a shop doing large brush on molds with people helping you, it's a really good idea to put a pigment in the silicone so that you can see where you're going and see where other people have been. And that way you don't have a lot of people trying to apply silicone to the easiest places to reach. Now this is our third and final layer. So I wanna keep the outside of this fairly smooth and I wanna make sure that I cover the high points of my piece. Now this is a relatively low relief piece, so not as big of a deal as maybe a, a relief with much deeper texture, but you wanna take care to make sure the high points are well covered with silicone. And overall, again, we're shooting for a thickness of about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch at the very thickest. Now for this technique to work, we wanna make sure we get the silicone well applied to the sides of our mold box because ultimately that will be a functioning part of the mold. So you wanna make sure that you make that fairly thick and take plenty of silicone and apply it up the sides of the mold box. Now, once I'm done with the brush, I'm gonna brush this out and get this as smooth as I can get it. But once I'm done brushing, I'm going to switch over to a popsicle stick. And the reason for that is, again, we want this to be as smooth as possible. And if you're concerned about alignment, you can even go so far as to take a palette knife and really work over the top of the surface of the mold and make sure you remove all your brush strokes. Now, overall, this is a pretty simple piece, so there's no need for that here. But on the sides, I wanna make sure those are as smooth as possible because we're going to be embedding keys on the sides of the mold box, again, facing into the mold. So here's one of our keys out of that little key sheet. And you see that side that was facing up that's clean and will easily bond to that silicone. As long as everything's done fast and you're working with fresh silicone right out of that key sheet, everything will bond really well to itself. Now what I'm doing here is using quilting pins to hold those key shapes in place. Now the reason for that is sometimes you might have those slump a little bit as the silicone is setting. So this ensures that they don't move or don't slide down because that could ruin a mold and cause you to have to do a whole layer all over again. So by holding those in place with uh, quilting pins, they're, they're gonna stay put until the silicone sets. And now once that layer is set, this is about 30 to 45 minutes later, ready to pull out the pins and pour the backing on our silicone mold. Now for the backing or mother mold, what I'm doing is pouring this with HydroCal. And I typically use either HydroCal or UltraCal 30. Now I'm not putting any reinforcement in this because this is a relatively small mold, but it's a good idea if you're working with a large span to embed hemp fiber or fiberglass or even a loose weave burlap. Now a couple of other options you could use to make this lighter weight would be extra resin or tooling resin like 1630, or we could even use a high density foam like TC300 in the 10 pound density. Now, real important, if you do use a gypsum product, make sure to clean your hands in a bucket of clean water and not in your sink. You'll thank me for that tip later. And now this is about uh, two hours later, everything is cured up and we're ready to demold our part. Now, I would recommend that if you're doing this process using rigid foam as a backing, I would make the mold box out of MDF and actually make a lid for it also out of waxed MDF so that you can contain that foam as it's expanding. And if there's interest in that, I might do a follow-up video that covers that process. But what I'm doing now is just trimming back any of the silicone that got under my pattern, and now ready to open up our finished mold. But what we have here is an arrangement where we have the benefits of a brushed on silicone mold and then we have, of course, that hard backing made of hydrocal that gives us the stability of a poured block mold. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be uh, a technique you would use everywhere you would normally use a block mold, but on large relief pieces, this is a big money saver. So real important to be aware of this technique and know where and when to apply it. Now the last step is just to do a little bit of housekeeping and clean up that edge of our the top of our mold. And that way we don't have any little frayed edges of silicone hanging down over the plaster mother mold. And now we're ready to reconfigure that mold for casting. So you see now once we've trimmed off that edge, 
we have a nice silicone brush on mold that functions like a block mold. So we can take that and flip it over and those little keys allow this to button into that mother mold or that backer made of hydrocal. So this is just a much more conservative way to use silicone when you're molding large relief pieces. Again, obviously this isn't for everything, but there's a lot of times where you're molding a large relief piece, especially if you work in the art bronze trade, and this is a much better way to go, a much more conservative use of silicone. Now, obviously there is a trade-off. You're going to be using more labor, but you use a lot less silicone. And this is also good for those of you making similar parts to what I'm molding here. And if you don't have a vacuum chamber, this is still a good way to get a nice bubble-free mold without having to vacuum degas your silicone. Now what I'm doing here, I'm going to do a quick resin cast with TC808 Jet Black Resin. This is a heat resistant, high strength black resin. And you notice I used a chip brush there to kind of scrub that resin into the surface of the mold. And that way I get a nice bubble free surface without having to pressure cast. So now this is about 15 minutes later and my part is ready to demold. This is about an inch thick part. So typically something like this you could demold in easily within about 15 to 20 minutes. And there we have our finished silicone mold that sits right there in its plaster mother mold. And there is our very first TC808 Jet Black Resin Cast. Now, as always, I'll put the links to all the products I used in the video description. So be sure to check those out. And of course, make sure you like and subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified when I post new content. And check all of these links out on the end screen. Lots of good knowledge here for those of you starting out making brush on molds.